Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a brand new video. Today we are doing another weekly reading vlog. It's been a really long time since I've done a reading vlog without a theme and I probably shouldn't be doing this one considering I have like a long phone list of reading vlogs with themes but I just really fancy just kind of like talking to you about the books I'm in the mood to read and not the books I kind of have to read. So I decided to start this vlog today to start the new week because it is Monday the 21st of August. I'm currently in the middle of a load of books as I usually am but the one that I'm currently like probably you know invested in is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I'm buddy reading this with Jade. Uh, I read a good chunk of this last night. I read about a, up to page 102 I think last night and then I woke up this morning and I read a bit more. And I'm now at page 173. So I'm like a good chunk of the way in. I think it's a 400 page book. So I'm like, yeah, it is. So I'm almost halfway, but not quite there yet. If you know, I didn't hear about it. It kind of took the, the whole book community by storm at the end of 2022. And that is why I picked it up. Um, it has one of those beautiful covers I've ever seen. I have been telling you the wrong kind of like genre for this. I thought this was a romance. It is not a romance. Um, I don't think it ever turns into a romance. I think it is a platonic friendship kind of story, which I love. We follow Sadie and Sam who meet as kids in a hospital gaming room and they kind of bond over their love for games by playing Mario. And then uh, Sadie keeps Sam company in the hospital while he is there having repeated surgeries and going through a hard time. Then we kind of so far in the story have like fast forwarded through their life and now they're in adulthood starting off as young adults kind of like going to their job um kind of trying to create a career out of making games i don't know how much more kind of i can say that so i'm not gonna like spoil anything more for you but that is essentially most of the story that i've gotten so far i am really really enjoying the story i want to start by saying it is so beautifully written like i can definitely understand why everybody's loving this I think I was really enjoying the setup up to page 100. Then between about a page 100 to 150, I was like, this is really dragging a little bit for me now. Like I'm a little bit over it. Let's move on, I want more story. And as I told Jade that, cause obviously your buddy reading it, I like turned the page like 151 or whatever and it just started to pick up. So the last 30 pages have been much more enjoyable. The last 20 odd pages have been much more enjoyable for me. Um, not that I didn't like those pages, I did just felt like we had gotten everything we could get out of them and I was like, okay, this just didn't need to be said. So I'd say like so far for me, like this is at like a 3.5, so this could go either way. It could definitely hit a 4 quite easily and I think it's definitely on track to doing that if I hadn't have been bored during that small segment. But I can also completely understand why this is like so many people's favourite book now. It's very reminiscent of ready player one but in a very different way which i absolutely loved i gave that book five stars obviously it's a little bit different that you're not in like the simulation of games but the friendships that you see between i think his name was wade something wade aaron wade what was his name just wade 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 that's my brother's name so i, that, I could just be making it up but i feel like that's coming into my head that his name was wade um, and the other girl in that book. It's kind of very reminiscent of this friendship. We're getting so much character depth. Like I know these characters in and out, like Sadie and Sam. Like I feel like we're really getting a lot of backstory to them. They're very well fleshed out. And like I also really like some of the side characters, even the ones that I don't like. Like I feel like they're written very well. Marx is amazing, I love him. And I feel like you've seen a lot of his like character, but you still, like you even know the things that aren't perfect about him, but you still love him. And then characters that I don't like, like I don't like Dov, but I also feel like he's really well fleshed out as a person, like as just as a side character. He's still really well fleshed out, even though he's not like a main part of the story. So definitely written very, very well. And I'm very much enjoying it. And I am excited to continue it and see where this goes. It's definitely grasping my attention quite well. This is my priority book at the moment. I don't know what I'll continue after this, but yeah, I'm very, very pleased with this right now. I wish I could go and carry on but this has already distracted me all morning from the things I have to do. So um, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna go and do some things that I have to do and then hopefully I will come back to this in a few hours when I have a little bit of a time to read. But yeah, I really wanted to start this vlog off and let you know what I was reading. I'm really excited to spend this week reading with you and I'll see you soon.
It is now Wednesday. I did not update you yesterday because I did not read at all. Um, but this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, I need to read something. I'll pick up and read a bit more of Tomorrow, Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I'll finish Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Um, meaning I read like 250 pages or something ridiculous this morning. Part of me hated my reading experience. But for reasons I will get into. But the other part of me just adores and loves this book so much i've settled on a four star rating but i think it's just so much more complex than a star rating it's just impossible to just say oh it was a four star and move on from it like i really just don't know how to feel i can completely understand why everybody loves this book it's so unique and brilliant and so well written and so well done it i don't have no idea if i told you what this is did i I don't know. In 1987, two people meet each other in a hospital gaming room. They are very young and they kind of bond over their love for video games. They then fall out of touch and we see them reconnect when they're in college. Then we watch their adult lives together. As they, I suppose you could say, can I say that part? Yes, as they develop games together and become a success. The thing is about this book... I both hated and adored to these two characters. There were side characters that were so well done. I think I've said that already. They were so well done, all the side characters. Like, I felt really, like, connected to them. Even though they were side characters, even the ones I hated. Like, Dom. Dov. Dov. But Sadie and Sam, the main characters, were so well fleshed out but they were such flawed people like that's what made them feel really really human there was a lot of like kind of like miscommunication but it just showed that their insecurities and their flaws got the better of them and it was frustrating it was angering it was constant incessant falling out over things like ego and just not opening their minds to what the other person could have felt or what the other person could have thought. Just making these assumptions. It was constant. But you loved seeing it. Like, even though these people are so flawed. And, like, Sadie especially. I don't like Sadie. I don't like Sadie as a person. I don't think Sadie's a very good person. I don't think Sam it could be considered a very good person either. But I'd say Sadie is less of a good person. But I love her. I connect to her i understand her feelings in a lot of ways some i don't but in some ways i understand a lot of her feelings and i just wow yeah this book was really well done but that's why i'm so confused by it like the fact that i absolutely loved it and yet i really didn't enjoy my reading experience like i don't think you can enjoy reading so much miscommunication and so much annoyance but like at the same time it's like this in-depth character study like, oh, wow, it was just so good. It has the vibes of Ready Player One, for sure. Like, the 80s, they're talking about games, they're developing games. But obviously, with less action, you're not in a game. But, like, the main characters do have the same vibe. Again, I think I've already said that. But for some reason, two days ago, has left my brain. By the end, like, I just didn't expect this. By the end, I just had, like, tears just streaming down my face. And I couldn't even tell you exactly why. I think I was just sad that my experience of these characters are coming to an end i'm sad that there isn't a book following the rest of their lives and i'm just yeah i'm sad to say goodbye to these characters they have been fascinating and a great read and i would definitely encourage everyone to pick this up it was definitely not a romance like i originally thought and i mean if i just looked for one second it literally says this is not a romance um <laughs> Um, but that is so true like it says this is not a romance but a story but it is about love and it's so so true these people love each other but they cannot be around each other unless you have like an existential crisis over this book this is very reminiscent if you like this book I would recommend to you Cleopatra and Frankenstein and if you liked Cleopatra and Frankenstein I would recommend this because they are both very much like character studies I think I got rid of my copy that was a mistake. But I got rid of my copy of Cleopatra and Frankenstein. But they are very much like character studies of people who are flawed and kind of just don't work together. Obviously Cleopatra and Frankenstein was a romantic connection. These are just a friendship connection. But the story is the same. And yeah. 
Animal Crossing and The Sims is mentioned in here too, like one sentence brief, but it was the best thing ever because I love both those games. <laughs> uh, great for lovers of games like me. It really was a good time. I don't have much more to say about this book. It was beautiful and awful all at the same time wrapped into one. It's like, it was exactly like that with Cleopatra and Frankenstein, which I vlogged and you can see me sobbing on the internet. Like, the characters are flawed. You don't like them, but you love them. You feel sorry for them. And that's exactly how I felt about this. I don't know if I'll ever reread it. I don't know if I'll ever want to put myself through that again, but I definitely see myself sitting with these characters for a very long time. I don't see them ever leaving my brain. Like, if it's like in years to come, I'm going to think back and be like, Sadie and Sam. Yeah. After I dated you the other day on this, on Monday, I started listening to A Soul of Ash and Blood. It's the fifth book in the From Blood and Ash series. And I'm not being funny. The name is ridiculous. Um, Because it's literally just From Blood and Ash. A Soul from Ash and Blood or something. Or A Soul from Blood and Ash. I don't know. Ridiculous. Um... That is the fourth book in the uh, From Blood and Ash series, as I just said. No, fifth book. I love this series, especially the fourth book. Like, I give it a five stars, but I'm not saying it's perfection. I'm really not. But I needed an audiobook to listen to while I was working, and I was having a little browse, and um, I found this one, which I didn't even know had released. It apparently came out in July, and I was baffled, because I've seen nothing for this book anywhere. So I don't know if I've just not been looking in the right places or what, but I had no idea this had come out. So I was super, super excited. I listened to about, I listened to about two hours on my speed, but my speed on this book is like 1.8 because as much as I normally listen to books on 3 to 3.5, the narrator of this is speedy, so you don't need to. So I listened to, let's say about three hours of the audiobook. I'm not obsessed. <laughs> Hang on, what I just said was a spoiler. So hang on, hang on, I'll delete that out. How do I talk about this book? Okay, so let's just say the male protagonist, I'm not going to say names, I'm not going to say anything because I did just say something that could be considered a spoiler. The male protagonist is just recounting the events that we saw from our female protagonist, Poppy, in the first book. Now, nothing about that could be a spoiler, correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so far I'm like, okay sure sure um but obviously it's been a while since i've been in this world i don't really remember that much so that could be why i just think these books are so easy to consume they're so fun and not fast paced in any way shape or form but kieran is my favorite character ever and i'm going to continue to stand over kieran and i think the book's got five stars because of kieran truly i love him so i'm going to continue listening to that but i think it's going to be a very slow audio like one i just listen to whenever i'm working um, and and am able to listen to something so obviously I can't all the time so yeah I'm not sure like if you'll see a lot of updates on that in this vlog but I just wanted to let you know I am reading it I have no idea what I'm going to pick up in the next physical read after this one like I feel like I just need like I don't know a smutty break because that's too much it's too much anyway I'm gonna go because I'm gonna have another existential crisis just thinking about this book Saturday. When did I last update you? Wednesday? I'm not doing a very good job, but the thing is I'm not reading that much. Um I last spoke to you when I finished tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And to be honest, like the end of that, but I was like, I just don't feel like I can, can connect with any more characters. Um so I didn't read another book and I haven't progressed any more in Soul of Ash and Blood or whatever it is. 
um, because to be honest, that's not enticing me right now. But last night I did start Fair Fair Rosaline, Fair Rosaline, Fair Rosaline, whatever, by Natasha Solomons, and I got to page eighty one, so I made quite a bit of progress. This is a brand new release. I think it came out a few days ago. Um, basically, like a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but you follow Rosaline, who basically Romeo loved before Juliet. And at the moment we've seen that, and you know, the synopsis gives a lot of way. So basically Rosalind gets in a relationship with a secret relationship. They are lovers uh, with Romeo. And then um, when a woman comes forward claiming to be the bearer of Romeo's child, Rosalind realises the truth behind Romeo and then she tries to save her cousin Juliet from Romeo, who, by the way, is like 14 and I had no idea. And Romeo's like a man. Um, ew. I always knew I hated Romeo, but this makes me really hate Romeo. Yeah, so, so far we've gotten to the part where they've just, like, they're, like, secretly... They've just confirmed themselves as lovers. It's very icky. It's very gross. It's very fast-paced, but obviously it's meant to be. I'm not... They're not criticisms of the book. I'm really, really enjoying it. The writing, the writing is mm, a little bit bland is the way I would describe it. It's like not giving me much to like, you know, like when you read a sentence, you're like, oh, I'm not feeling that about any of this. But that's fair enough. Like not every book has to do that. It's just something I've noticed. So far, it's given me a lot of angry emotions. Like I'm really angry at Rosalind's dad and stuff. But I will update you as and when I read more of this. Hopefully I'll read some more tonight. I just didn't get very far because it was super late. Um, and my eyes were burning. I was reading so much last week, which is why I started this vlog. And now out of nowhere, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to read anything. But I think it's just because the books I am reading, like Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, are much like harder books to read. Like they take a lot more brain power in terms of you really connect with the characters. So afterwards, you kind of like think about them a lot. They're not like easy to just forget and move on to another book, you know? It is Sunday night and I have just finished Fair for Rosaline, Rosaline, Rosaline <laughs> by Natasha Zolomon. I am uh, very upset to be giving this review, just so you know. But I did not love this. I think I'm going to give this a two stars. Um, there wasn't anything that I hated about it that made me just really, really dislike it. Other than the fact the entirety of it was bland and boring. And that's the only way I can describe it. The writing had the opportunity to be really mesmerising and beautiful. And it didn't. It was bland and boring. The plot, again, was bland and boring. And obviously we all know the tale of jo Romeo and Juliet. And that tension of wondering whether the end was going to remain the same or not was not there. I did not care. I did not like any character at all. I truly didn't care what happened to any of them. I didn't care what happened to Juliet. I thought she was one of the most obnoxious people ever. Like, she was written terribly. Um, Like, I just, yeah, I just didn't care at all. Like, if anything, it was kind of playing women dumb. And I just don't like that. Like, women are not dumb. And I don't like them playing them as such either. Um, I also had a real issue with the way that they were falling in love after five minutes, like one discussion, one conversation, and then suddenly it was, I'm in love, my heart is betrothed, I won't trust anybody that I've known and loved my whole life over this five minute conversation. Again, it's playing women very dumb. And I find that quite offensive. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't love this retelling. I don't think it gave anything that wasn't already given like i get that we saw a lot of the, this character that we don't see a lot of before and i appreciate that and i appreciated the new take on the story and seeing them in a different view because i absolutely hate romeo i've always hated romeo when we were in school studying romeo and juliet i wrote a whole essay on why romeo was a terrible person and my english teacher didn't get it and told me i was wrong and i was like not wrong he's a terrible person um <laughs> i'm sorry he is um i'm sorry if you're a romeo and juliet fan i'm just not i don't think that's an epitome of love at all um and i think it's really weird that we as students study that when we're teenagers so strange i was intrigued to see it from this view and i was very intrigued to see it where romeo is a villain 
Love that. Don't get me wrong. Love that. I just hate the way this was told. This could have been perfect and it could have been a whole new light on the story. And it did try to be, and I'm not saying that nobody should pick this up. I'm just saying don't go into it with the highest of expectations. Like, I don't know why I expected the writing to be beautiful and the story to capture me in a way that, like, it hasn't before. I don't know why I expected that, but I did. And it wasn't giving. I also feel like the ending was not rushed. It wasn't rushed, but there were holes and flaws in the plan that happened. Now, I cannot say anything without spoiling, and I do not want to tell you how this ends, but I, I've, i the way it ended, I was like, well, that wouldn't have worked because this person would have done this. And the fact that they didn't do it was kind of just like a plot hole to me because it's obvious that that is what they do. There was never a change in the opinions of that person to make that not happen. This is really hard to do without spoiling. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just couldn't appreciate the book as much as I should have been able to appreciate the book because it just wasn't my cup of tea to my tastes despite the fact that it could have been it could have been a feminist delight it really could have been and it wasn't a real shame it really is a real shame but I don't hate this book I don't despise this book like I almost gave it a 2.5 it kind of just got lower and lower it was like a three and I was like yeah it's good I like it but I don't love it. And then it was kind of like a two and a half. And I was like, yeah, I don't really feel anything about this. Then we got to the end. I was kind of like, yeah, I don't really like this. So it's not that I hate this. And it's not that I hated the entirety of it. I actually was quite invested at the beginning. But by the end, I can say I didn't love this book. I didn't really like this book. But it's not like a terrible book. I just think like if if I had been the editor of this book, there would have been a lot of things I would have recommended to be changed to make this a good one, in my opinion. Yeah, anyway, it is a new release and I hate talking bad about new releases. I really do because I feel like then you're not encouraging people to pick it up. But if I'm being truly honest with myself and with you, it just wasn't great. But again, if you're a Romeo and Juliet fan and you want to see a new perspective on that story, this is going to give it to you and I really appreciate the new perspective. Like I feel like I, I'm not worse for having read it. I am here to wrap up the vlog. It is Monday meaning it's been a week and yeah I think we've done enough reading this week. I did want to tell you what I'm choosing to read next before I leave and I think I'm going to read A Foul Lady Fortune because this is about Rosalind Long which I assume to be another Rosaline retelling um and so considering I felt a little bit like lackluster about the last one I thought I would continue and try another one if you were that fancy in picking this up I'm pretty sure you have to read these violent delights duology first which I have read um that's what I've kind of been seeing as a general consensus on booktube so yeah I'm thinking I'm gonna read this one next because I can't believe I haven't yet already so yeah I'm gonna go read this but I'm gonna put this in the next vlog anyway so stay tuned if you want to see me reading that next week I shall see you in the next video thank you so much for watching bye